thank you all for joining us today um, in our effort to end child marriage in Minnesota. Um, and I appreciate everyone who's joined us, including Unchained at Last um, from the East Coast, and my colleague who passed the bill in the House last year, Kaylee Herr, and all the yay, yay, yay for Kaylee, and um, all the young women and young boys who have joined us today in protest to the Minnesota law, which still allows child marriage. As you know, we have a loophole in our state law that allows 16 and 17 year olds with parents and with a judge to get married. And it's really become the international standard of 18. And as I traveled around the world, I've been really proud that women all over the world are saying, no, we don't want our girls to get married. But yet in the US, state by state, we're still allowing children to marry, boys and girls. We want our girls and our boys to finish school. We want the girls not to become pregnant. They're too young. It's not healthy to be a child mother. And children cannot be mothers. So although it does apply to boys too, we don't want boys to get married as children. Most child marriages are a young girl married to a much older man. So I'm very pleased to invite Freddie Reese forward. She's the founder and executive director of Unchained at Last. She also was the victim of a forced marriage and that compelled her to form this organization. And she's gonna talk about some of the very serious statistics about that happen to girls who marry as children. Freddie. Well, thank you. Thank you so much, Senator Pappas and Representative Herr for introducing this important bill. Uh, so let's talk about what it means to marry with parental consent and judicial approval, because you might think if a parent and a court are involved, that's perfectly okay. Here's the problem. When a child is forced to marry, the perpetrators are almost always the parents. So parental consent does nothing to protect a child from a forced marriage. And when a child is forced to marry, the child is also forced to lie to the court about it. Of the many, many survivors that we at Unchained at Last have worked with who were forced to marry as children and went in front of a court as part of that process, 100% of them lied to the judge because they were too scared about what their parents would do to them when they got back home. And so court tend to defer to the parents and rubber stamp these petitions for child marriage. This entire process disempowers children. They are entered into this, these marriages by a parent and a judge with little or no say from them. Now, marriage before 18 is terrible for many reasons, but I'm going to share with you the two main reasons that we at Unchained at Last are determined to end child marriage in the U.S. One is it can so easily be a forced marriage when it's before the age of 18 because age 18 is the age of adulthood here in Minnesota. Before you are an adult, you face overwhelming legal and practical barriers if you try to leave home to escape from parents who are planning an unwanted wedding for you or to escape from an abusive spouse. You cannot get into a domestic violence shelter typically because domestic violence shelters across the U.S. will not take in unaccompanied minors. You cannot easily retain an attorney because contracts with children are voidable. And you also are not allowed to bring a legal action in your own name when you're a child. And while marriage in Minnesota does automatically emancipate a child, because that emancipation is established entirely by case law, and there's no statute that explains what it is exactly, what rights a, an emancipated minor has, it is unclear in Minnesota whether a child who was entered into a marriage by a parent and a judge even has the right to file for a divorce. Now, the other really important reason to end child marriage is that marriage, even at 16 or 17, has devastating lifelong repercussions. Right here in the U.S., we know from studies that it destroys a girl's health, her education, her economic opportunities. It also significantly increases a risk that a girl or a woman will, be, uh, will experience domestic violence within that marriage. It is happening at an alarming rate. This, what the U.S. State Department calls a human rights abuse, is happening at an alarming rate in Minnesota. U.S. Census data shows us that as of 2014, 1,142 children in Minnesota had already been married. States across the U.S. are now introducing and passing legislation to end all marriage before 18 without exceptions. And under the United Nations Sustainable Development Goals, the entire world has promised to end child marriage by year 2030. Minnesota should be at the forefront of this global movement to end child marriage.
Thank you again, Senator Pappas, and, and Representative Hart. <laughs> thank you, Brady. <Katie. laughs> and thank you for all the work that Unchained at Last has done in this issue. Next, we have Representative Kaylee Hur, again, the House author that passed the bill last year unanimously. And Kaylee has her own, we, we applauded <laughs> earlier, Kaylee has her own story to tell us about her own life experience. Thank you, Senator Pappas, and thank you, Freddie, for sharing uh, the information around uh, the statistics that we're experiencing. So when Senator Pappas brought this bill to me last year, I was a little bit worried about um, changing a practice that our country has condoned since its beginning. Then it dawned on me that had this practice played out in my own life, that my life would be very, very different today. You see, when I was a minor, I attended a community event, and an adult man saw me for just a brief moment, and he decided in that moment that I was going to be the person he wanted to marry. I remembered his, he had his father called my father, and that conversation I listened to. And uh, I heard my father say to the caller that he would only entertain uh, the thought of me marrying their son uh, only after I graduated college. Had my father not been my advocate that day, my life outcome would have been very different. I would, never, I would have never gone away to college, I would have never met my husband at school, and I would have never lived all over the country to advance my career. Most importantly, I would not be here today standing before all of you as a state legislator, as the chief author uh, for the House bill to eliminate a practice that takes away opportunities for other girls uh, that I had and the ability for them um, to uh, have opportunities and they, because they didn't have an advocate uh, to support them the way my father did. So we as adults, uh, we are the ones who know better and so we should do better to protect our children. I want to emphasize that child marriage is not an international issue. It is not an issue for, uh, that only impacts communities of color. It happens in the United States in new immigrant communities, and it happens in communities that have lived in this country for many generations. And it is nearly universal effect of stunting childhood, uh, childhoods and exposing minors to abuse, poverty, lifelong physical and mental health challenges. We need to practice what we preach. Our international stance is that child marriage relates to human trafficking and to abuse. We cannot condemn other countries and turn a blind eye to what is happening in our own backyard. Last year, the Minnesota House of Representatives voted unanimously to end child marriages in Minnesota. The bill never received a hearing in the Senate. It is time for Minnesota to join Delaware and New Jersey in protecting the future of our children and pass Senate File 1393, eliminating child marriages and requiring proof of age in order to legally marry. Thank you. Thank you. Excellent. Thank you so much for joining us. I know you have. I know that Representative Her has to leave, so you'll be excused. Thank you. Um, the next we have, uh, we want to hear from the voices of young girls, and we have Claire Willette, Eden Prairie High School, and Young Ferenc Fellow in Human Rights and Law at World Without Genocide Mitchell Hamlin School of Law. Claire. <clears throat> next year, I will be attending the University of Wisconsin-Madison. I will be rowing in the Division I level, I will be studying political science, and I will be pursuing my dream of working in human rights law. I am lucky enough to have an unimpeded path to do what I am passionate about, but the reality is that not all girls are this fortunate. Child marriage prevents young people like me from reaching their full potential in life. If children who are 16 or 17 are barred from drinking alcohol, getting tattoos, or even voting, why should they be able to enter into a lifetime contract of marriage? Oftentimes, these contracts are lopsided and unfair to the child involved. A child can be coerced into marriage by outside factors. A child can be taken advantage of by older adults. A child can be saddled with responsibilities that are far too great for her age. And worst of all, she loses her ability to be a child. She loses her autonomy and she misses out on formative years to become self-sufficient and independent. Children are not meant to be married. Children are meant to be learning from their mistakes, defining and redefining themselves, and making discoveries. Child marriage devastates the lives of innocent people and it occurs right here in Minnesota. I'm disappointed that in 2020 only two states have made child marriage illegal, but Minnesota can and should follow in their footsteps. Woo! Thank you, yeah. Claire. Thank you very much. Appreciate that. Um, thank you. That was excellent. Um, next, what we have is um, a personal story from a survivor, Don Tyree. She's a woman who was coerced to marry at age 13 to a 32-year-old man who sexually abused her and got her pregnant. Don, thank you for coming forward and telling you. your story. We appreciate it. Thank you all for being here. Uh, again, my name is Don Tyree, and I was forced into marriage at 13 years old to a 32-year-old man. 
Um, the first two things that I would say that a child loses upon child marriage is the right to consent and access to education. <clears throat> My abuser pleaded with me for several days to marry him when we learned that I was pregnant. And my parents told me it was my best choice. Um, I tried to get out of that marriage when I was 16 years old, only to be denied safe housing, um, access to education, um, and parental support. Uh, since parents are often uh, the perpetrators of these marriages, uh, they abandon the children. So at 16 years old with a one and two year old, we lived in poverty without any resources or support. I've worn many hats throughout my career, and at one point I became a court-appointed special advocate. And I sat with children that were being emotionally, physically, and sexually abused. And they absolutely will not tell anyone who is hurting them or tell a judge that they don't want to be married, because that was me. All too often, these children are coerced into these marriages. Um, excuse me. And by providing these loopholes, it, it just per perpetuates the child, the child marriage, the inequality, and the human rights that we need to put an end to. And if it's not us standing here speaking to this issue, then who will? And if it's not you listening, then who will? And if it's not us that makes a change, then who will? Thank you. Thank you, so much. Thank you so much for coming forward with your story. It was very heartwarming. Um, uh, next, we expected to have Rose Roach from the, uh, the, from the Minnesota Nurses Association. Unfortunately, she is ill. Do nurses are allowed to get ill? <laughs> so uh, Dr. Ellen Kennedy from World Without Genocide, who has been a, a force behind the effort to end child marriage in Minnesota, is going to read her comments. Thank Dr. You. Kennedy. Thank you. In 2019, the 24,000 members of the Minnesota Nurses Association passed a resolution supporting the end of child marriage. And I share Rose Roach's remarks. According to UNICEF, child marriage is a form of violence against children and it is a public health emergency. Most of the children who are married are girls. Girls who marry as children compared to those who marry at age 18 or older are three times more likely to be beaten by their spouses, 31% more likely to live in poverty, 50% more likely to drop out of high school, 50% more likely to get divorced, and 23% more likely to have a heart attack, diabetes, cancer, stroke, and psychiatric disorders. They are under undereducated, underinsured, underprotected, and underdeveloped. Child marriage is literally life-threatening to girls. girls. Girls pressed into child marriage often become pregnant while children themselves. Their bodies are too small and undeveloped, putting them at risk for obstetric fistulas and other serious conditions. Studies show that girls who give birth before the age of 15 are five times more likely to die in childbirth than women in their 20s. A child having a child greatly increases the risk of complications in pregnancy and childbirth. These complications are a leading cause of death among adolescent girls. And the girl's offspring are at increased risk as well for premature birth and death as neonates, infants, or children. If a mother is under the age of 18, her baby's chance of dying in its first year, this is a shocking figure, is 60% greater, 60% greater than that of an infant born to a mother older than 19. Child marriage is a human rights violation. It violates girls' physical and emotional well-being, and as a direct consequence, it violates the well-being of her family and the entire community. We must end child marriage in Minnesota, and we must end it now. The health and the lives of our girls are at stake. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Kennedy, for that comment. Um, we uh, have gotten some good news. We didn't get a hearing in the Senate last year, but uh, Tuesday, Senator Limmer told me that I'm sure with the encouragement of advocates like this and his constituents that he will be granting the bill a hearing. 
Uh, so, very good news. So stay tuned for the date of that hearing, and we hope that the Senate will also give it the robust support that the House did. Um, now, before I take your questions, I'm just going to announce that we're going to be marching now to the rotunda, where we'll have a chain in. So those of you who are able, please feel free to join us with some chanting and some songs and a moment of silence, some more survivor stories. Um, but before we leave, I'm not sure what time it is. Um, are there any questions? You mentioned the statistic for um, oh, in 2014, the number of people who had been married as minors. Is there are there more updated statistics on how often courts are approving these petitions in Minnesota? Like how frequent this is here? Yeah, I've there? actually been looking for that data, but it, it hasn't been compiled. So we'd have to go the court through the court records one by one because there would be a record if a judge granted that, but no one has been instructed to um, compile the numbers. So that's part of the problem. Can you clarify the numbers too? It was over a thousand and what exactly that means? Was they the were census, currently minors or they, they were had been minors? They were able to look at the 2014 census and by looking at the ages determined that there were 1,142 in that census that had been married as children. That's the data we have. Now some national data indicates that it's maybe 10 percent of uh, women and men marry as children, but that's kind of an extrapolation from some national data. So how many of those marriages happened in Minnesota those are the in ones recent that, times? That's, that's what we don't know because we don't have a more recent census and we haven't had anyone compile the court records. And those are people who could be over 18 now. But they could be over 18 now, but they were married when they were. And they could so have married I, Yes, I, yes, Brady, go ahead. So actually, the uh, this is the American Community Survey does uh, every year, the census only every 10 years, but American Community Survey every year asks 15 to 17 year olds, are you married, divorced, widowed, or separated? And if you answer yes to any of those questions, you have already been married. And they release the uh, four-year um, aggregates of data every four years. So as of 2014, the most recent year for which we have the aggregated data, as of that year, uh, 1,142 children living in Minnesota, age 15 to 17, had already been married. Okay, so, so they were definitely in that age group in 2014. Correct. Okay. Ah. And, uh, yeah, so the census looks only at 15 to 17-year-olds, but marriage below that age, even at 15, is not legal in Minnesota. So presumably um, there were no younger children. However, if somebody from another state had gotten married in Minnesota, that would not be counted in the data. Or if somebody had gotten married here and then moved away, that would not be counted in the data. So we, we assume that's probably an underestimation. Yes, yeah, so we could have people who marry in a state where it's legal to marry younger that then moved to Minnesota. I know a lot of what you're talking about is older men uh, sort mm -hmm. of coercing younger <coughs> girls into marriage. But a lot of arranged marriages or marriages where parents pressure mm -hmm. children into marriage are children marrying children. And I wonder what are the implications of a child raising a child in terms of child abuse? Mm -hmm. something like mm -hmm. it's, it's pretty unusual for the boy to be underage as well. I mean, it could be that it's a, you know, a high school romance, it's, and, and they can wait till they're 18, for sure. But it's often an older man. And it can be the result of a, a child that was abused by an older man, possibly raped by an older man. And in order to avoid prosecution, they marry. OK, that's usually what happens. But it's not what always happens. I wouldn't I say usually. I said that so can so be a case. what are the implications of children raising children in terms of ch child abuse? Is that something that you've worked into? Because children don't know how to be parents. You mean so they could be abusive? Yeah, I don't know if we have any data on that. Well, almost. So we have data from across the U.S. that shows that between 2000 and 2010, an estimated 248,000 children were married. Almost all of them were girls married to adult men. So it's what you're saying does happen, but it's very unusual. So the data that we have on the devastating repercussions focus exclusively on girls. But he asked a question about, are these girls who marry, are they likely to abuse oh, their not children? Just the girls. In that case, it would be those, yeah, yeah, both parents, in the fifth case I'm right now. Right, and I don't think we have information on that, but certainly possible. I have a question. Hi. Um, sorry if someone already asked this. I was tweeting. I apologize. Um, I think there, there seems to be some concern about recognizing other state laws, and, and that was a reason that <clears throat> the bill maybe didn't get a hearing last year. Is that something that um, you're prepared to, 
to waiver on, or what do you think about recognizing out-of-state marriages here? Um, I don't, that never came up as a reason to not hear the bill. Um, but the whole issue of uh, the way our, our Constitution works is that we have to recognize those marriages if they happen out of state, which is why Unchained at Last is going state by state to raise the marriage age to 18 in every state so we don't have also that as a loophole. What is some of the, op or the opposition that you heard either the last session when it didn't get a hearing or maybe now that you're maybe expecting or just any other arguments, I guess, that you've maybe encountered? Well, there was um, some comments that were made about, and, and Kaylee certainly would dispute this, about in certain ethnic communities, they want, might want to marry their daughters for the, for the uh, dowry, which I don't think even happens anymore, kind of some old-fashioned views like that. There were some comments about a Romeo-Juliet romance. Why should we interfere with that? And my response was, did you read the end of the play? <laughs> Don't they end up dead at the end? You know, it's not a really good reason to allow Romeo Juliet romance. If they're in love, pressures. if they're in love, yes. what? Because of family pressures. For family yeah. pressures, right. But if they're really in love, and I have dear friends who are high school sweethearts, got married when they were over 18 and are still married, you know, over 40 years, you know, those marriages can last, but there's no reason to wait, that they can't wait till they're over 18. And you said you got a hearing in the Senate. Is it scheduled? Or it's not told? scheduled yet, but we'll be calling every day. To, and we've heard, my staff has heard back from the committee administrator that they do plan to schedule it. So. Can you speak to mm -hmm. the requirement that the two individuals involved show identification or verification of their age and how that compares to the current standard? How it compares to what? The current standard or uh -huh. lack thereof. Not sure I can really answer that. I think that, I think I can't even speak to that because I could say that they don't have to prove their age. To get married, they can just say it. And so under our new law, they would have to prove their age. Um, that could be the situation, but I'm not 100% sure. All right, thank you all so much for joining us. And we, we're done in time. You don't have to go to the insulin hearing yet. Come <laughs> join us at the rotunda. All right.